Hi, welcome back to Thomas Turner Fishing Antiques. Uh, we are delighted today to have Chris Clems, classic fly rod and reel maker, with us with some of the range, a small part of the range of rods he does, but more importantly today, we're going to be talking about his split cane or bamboo if you're in America, you split bamboo rods. Welcome, Chris. Well, thank you it's, very much for having me. It's lovely to have you along here. Um, now, you've been involved in this business for some time. You're a fisherman, and going by the accent, you're not a local fisherman. That's correct. So where are you from? Uh, from South Africa, Cape Town originally. Right. Uh, I used to guide guide on the streams outside of Cape Town in the in the Winelands before coming over to London oh. about 12 years ago. Oh, very nice. And your passion in split cane rods has developed from there? Yes. Uh, I mean, I've always had, a, I think, always had an aspiration to have a bamboo fly rod myself, which we all, it all started. And I think all fly fishermen um, would love to own a bamboo fly rod. Yes. Yeah, they are a live thing, aren't they? Compared to a, a, a boron or a cane rod these days. I mean, they're just, I have to say that these, this, all of these rods that we've got here today, some of which are not on display, they're an absolute work of art. They are beautifully presented. This, I understand, is one of yours you use, which you, can I pick it up? Of course. I didn't pick anything up in case I break it, which is, um, it's, it's absolutely stunning. The workmanship is stunning on it. The thing that gets me about this is all the different colours of what I call the real seat, but it's not a real seat, is it? It's technical way is. Well, the spacer yeah, with the, uh, the wood. This the is wood the spacer. Bowl. Okay, so these parts here, which look all different, these are bespoke to each individual rod. Yes, so you can have a choice of wooden spacer, also a nickel silver finish, or which is this one. Yes, right. Or, okay. Or, or, or brass. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and also, you can choose your wooden spacer, up locking, down locking, sliding band. Right, so I wrongly, I like a down lock, but a lot of people like the reel to sit high so it doesn't scratch on the ground, but you can build that into the rod when you build it for somebody. Yes. Okay, so if we go back and look at taking us through the process of making a rod, you don't stick it in a machine and it comes out the other end of rod, do you? There's a certain amount of work involved in making one. Yeah, there's considerable work involved and it takes about two to three months to make each rod you make. Two to three months? That's right. Right, okay. Yeah. Each one is hand split, hand planed. Right. Um, we offer a choice of impregnated or classic varnish finish. Okay. The varnish finish, we do three coats of very fine varnish. Right. Um, impregnated finish, uh, we immerse the blank in uh, resin for two weeks uh, under pressure, which gets the, the resin to the core of the blank, which makes it impervious to water damage. Oh, right. I've, never, I've, I've used the word impregnated like I know what it means for years. I've branded it about, oh, it's impregnated. But I've never understood how they do it. I thought it was some sort of a vacuum you stuck it in. But it's a pressurized system or vat. In a, in a pressurized tank. Yeah. Right, that's amazing. So does the color change when you do that? Slightly. Um, in fact, this rod <coughs> is an impregnated finish. Okay, so it's a darker finish. finish. Slightly and darker. Okay, and it's a semi-matte sort of semi shine on it. Okay, this one is more of a gloss. And that's more of a gloss. Which some people prefer, classic the, the classic finish. We've actually popped on this. I know we shouldn't. But we've popped on this, our favourite reel by S. Big. Now, if you look at the introductory video that we have with each of our videos, you'll see the camera sort of flash across this. Uh, this has now become important because S. Big, who we thought was just a chap, he isn't, he's actually a maker. Septon Big was a maker in London from 1885 to 1887. So this is now rare, so I'm going to buy it. So that's at the end of the show. So a rod will take two or three months to build minimum. Yes. It's a very bespoke item. That's right. So if, for instance, you had a retirement gift, if you had somebody who was uh, rather special in your life and you wanted to make them something special, do you just phone up Chris and say, make me a rod, or does Chris need to ask some questions? I have some questions to ask. Right. Uh, okay. We usually complete one of our custom order forms, um, okay. which I normally meet the customer in person, or we can send them out a copy in the post. Or okay. Or uh, you meet them in person in what area? Is this if they're London-based? In London, generally. Oh, okay. Um, Hyde Park or Green Park. Gotcha. Because I've got a mate in Orkney, and you're probably not going to go and meet him either. Unfortunately not. Right. But this order form you have here is very comprehensive. And I, I see things. You've got the number of sections, whether you want a full action, a mid action, a fast action. Uh, you've got the rod length, of course, the choice of grip, the colour, the choice of colour of these. You have many of these in stock. Yes. I think this yeah, looks yeah, just yeah. amazing. Yeah. I mean, of that one. I think that looks exactly. stunning. It's great when someone can actually choose Yeah, I think it's absolutely case. stunning. And then we come to the presentation case, presentation case get my teeth in, and, and the overall wrapping of it. So you could choose a handmade leather rod tube, which is, I have to say, stunning. You could go for a wooden box, which is fully fitted, and you could include a reel, which you make. 
Uh, we do make our own reels. Right, um, okay. And we also have an optional silk fly line to go with that. Right, so the benefits of having a silk fly line as opposed to using a plastic one are what? Silk fly lines um, have a lower, wind, uh, lower diameter than plastic fly lines, <clears throat> so they have less wind resistance. Okay. So you don't need a fast action rod to cast them. Right. So it makes them a perfect match for split cane fly rods, which have a traditional full action. Although we can make split cane rods with a more faster action to work. And how do you do that? Is that a change of taper? It's a change of taper, so okay. it's a faster taper. Okay. Really. So the guy who wants to double haul with a fast tip rod, he really isn't the client we're looking for in terms of that. He needs to understand that this is a little bit more relaxed. It's a gentleman's sport. It is. I mean, even though this, this rod, uh, which is one of my most popular, the seven foot six five weight for streamer fishing. In yes. Yeah. Um, I've, I've cleared a, a plastic fly line on, on this rod before. It yeah, has plenty of power in the bat section. Without fitting a toby on the end, is that what you're saying? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's the only way I can cast a fly line, is fit a toby on it. But that's not going to work here. That is a two-tip rod, so you also have an option of uh, giving twin tips as opposed to a single tip with the rod. Yes, so the, if you have the two-tip sections, yeah. they're actually made from the same column of bamboo. So right, exactly so they match the same, perfectly. Exactly the same. Okay. And the reason for action. two tips? Um, you got a bright one. you got a bright one, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you used to rotate tips between between days fishing. Um, right. But today, with modern varnishes and impregnated finish, oh, okay, there's no need to do okay. that. Okay, that makes sense. It's more peace of mind. So we could fit you up with a rod to suit the requirements that you need. You can have the fittings and the colours that you desire. You can have the outer case, an outer tube, or a bag. You can then make a reel to match it, and you can then recommend. A fly line, a silk fly line, which is not only going to look, look and feel better, it's going to fly better as well with the whole kit. So the whole thing's a balanced outfit. Yes, exactly. Marvellous. That's absolutely great. Well, Chris is joining us in the company and that we're promoting his products. Um, we would love you to come on, have a look at the video, have a look at the products which will be listed on the website, and then come back to us with an order. We'll pass you on to Chris um, and then he can make for you very bespoke um, really a rod to keep for the rest of your life. I assume these keep long term if you look after them. Exactly, I think like <clears throat> any piece of favourite kit, the, the, the care. Yeah, isn't. I mean we see rods which are a hundred year old and are in absolutely superb condition but with modern varnishes and modern lacquers they're surely going to last even longer than they did originally. Yeah. A quick, quick tip on cane rods, never store them in an airtight container. Right. Uh, always try and keep them. <clears throat> Leather rod tube's perfect because it breathes. Um, if, Bamboo is a natural material. <clears throat> oh, that's interesting. So when you get the rod and it's in an aluminium tube and you think you're doing right, putting it in the tube and screwing it up in a corner, that's not right. Uh, leave, the, leave the lid off. Another top tip from Thomas Turner. <laughs> <laughs> leave the lid off the tube. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this section. Go to the uh, Chris Clem section on our website and order your rod today. Great chatting with you. Thank you very much. See you again. Cheers. Cheers.